Hello, my name's Toby Thompson. I'm with Professor Andy Neely from the Centre for Business Performance here at Cranfield. Andy, we're talking about Dr Philip Smith, who finished his DBA in 2007. Tell us what you remember about Philip and his DBA. So Philip's a really interesting character. I mean, he joined having been uh, chief executive stroke chairman in various businesses, ran a transportation business, logistics company, and decided uh, he wanted to understand a little bit more about how management accounting and the operations, the actual activities inside organisations uh, function together. Uh, so in this DBA, Philip looked at particularly the link between operational day-to-day -day activities and the accounting systems uh, inside his own company. Uh, and in essence, he used his own company as a, a case study site. Uh, now that was really interesting. So as the DBA evolved, he did three projects. Um, the first one was a, a literature review, uh, looking at what was already known about accounting systems and operations. And I think that benefited Philip uh, because it gave him a much greater, much richer understanding of some of the theory around the things that he'd been doing in his life over the years uh, in terms of practice. So he had the benefit of applying it directly to his own business. He did, and that was in, effectively the second project. So in the second project, he then went and looked and said, well, what do we do inside our organisation in the individual profit centres we're running, uh, and how do we make decisions, and what information do we use, and how does that relate to the actual operation of the organisation? So there were a couple of benefits there. Uh, first of all, he had great access to the organisation, great data, uh, but there was a direct business benefit as well because he was reflecting on an organisation he wanted to improve and, uh, and make better. So is that an instance of maybe business as usual? That he's immersed and embedded in his own business, he's got the theory of that field, uh, he couldn't see maybe new ideas? Was that part of your job to give him an idea or maybe have you thought of this? Well, I think the, D so the DBA is interesting because often they're quite senior people come on the DBA. Uh, and you have a number of benefits as a, a candidate. The first is uh, your cohort, your cohort of peers, uh, often from different backgrounds, different types of organisations, um, but are very willing to challenge your ideas. So you can stand up and present and say, I'd like to study X. And for some people in senior roles, it's quite a shock when you first stand up and present your um, uh, your ideas and somebody says to you, actually, I disagree with you, because you don't normally get that inside the organisation, particularly if you're in a very senior position. So I think the first benefit for the, the, the candidates themselves is their cohort, just debating ideas with people that come from different walks of life. So as a result of that process, he's already settling or reframing his own uh, idea that he exactly. came to you with. Exactly. So your role then will be what? Would it be continue that process to, to support To continue him? that process, to support it, to expand the horizons a little bit. Because of course the, the cohort of DBAs come with a lot of often industrial business experience, um, but they don't necessarily know the latest thinking in the academic literature. So the second benefit that I think is delivered, and this is partly through the supervisory and panel structure, uh, is that actually when you get together with your supervisor, certainly the way I tend to approach this, is uh, very much in the early stages about saying to people, uh, here are the things that you should be reading, here's the interesting work, you want to go and look at what's going on at um, uh, Wharton, you want to go and look at what's going on at Harvard, you want to go and look at what's going on in London Business School or some colleagues in Cranfield or wherever the, the most interesting ideas are at a particular point in time. So it sounds like you're not really helping him refine his issue. He came to you, came to Cranfield with an issue already. You're making him look more broadly, more wider than maybe he would have done on his own study. So I think the supervisory process is a combination of, of sometimes broadening out the issue and sometimes refining it. And it's almost, uh, it almost goes through that cycle. What often happens in a DBA, uh, or indeed in a PhD, is people come with a really, what they think is quite a well-defined problem, but often it's really broad. Uh, and the first phase of the DBA is all about trying to narrow that down a little bit and say, well, so specifically, what are you going to study? Mm -hmm. Having narrowed down a little bit, you then start to broaden out again and say, okay, well, if that's what I'm going to study, then what are the different theoretical lenses I might look at that problem from? So if I take Philip's example, you know, Philip came and said, I'm really interested in how do we get better connection between operational activities and the financial information in organisations. Um, that sounds like a narrow problem, but when you start to think about all the work that's gone on on accounting and uh, performance measurement, designing measurement systems, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you realise it's a massive issue. So the first job is saying, well, actually, specifically, what is it about this connection between um, your operations and your day-to-day -day decisions do you want to study? And you start to have that conversation with the candidate, that evolves over a period of time, there are various people who have input to that. Um, once you've narrowed the topic down a little bit, then it's time to say, okay, well if that's what we're studying, now let's think about this from a, 
behavioral perspective. You know, what are the what are the behavioral consequences of the measurement systems you might be proposing for your organization? Or what are the um, the IT uh, implications? What information systems do you need uh, to support this measurement system? And so this, it, almost the second phase of the DBA involves broadening back out and saying there are multiple ways I can look at this problem, multiple perspectives, uh, which is the right one for my problem, or alternatively, you know, how do I combine a couple of these things? And then you go through a narrowing phase again of doing some more research. So it's almost um, an oscillation of getting tighter, getting more closely defined, broadening out, getting more tightly defined, broadening out as you unpack the problem. So for those people thinking of doing a DBA who might be watching this video, um, be prepared to be flexible. Don't come with a precious view as to your uh, research problem. It needs to be widened and it needs to be focused. Bit of a pummeling process by the sound of it. it I think it is. And I think if you, if you come in with a view which says that's exactly what I want to study in my DBA, the chances are you'll change your mind within six months anyway. Um, and one of the nice things about the structure of the DBA program, uh, particularly the panel structure, I think, is that we've deliberately designed the DBA so you get input from academics with different uh, disciplinary backgrounds backgrounds. So on Philip's panel we had at various points, um, I was always there as the lead supervisor so there's some consistency, uh, but we had at one stage an expert in complexity science because some of the issues that Philip was interested in were around uncertainty and complexity so one of my colleagues in that area was on the panel advising Philip for a while. Uh, as Philip's interests evolve, uh, then we had a change expert in, uh, on the panel for a while who was looking more at how you manage change processes in organisations. And then we ended up with a strategy expert on the panel. So what you tend to do and what the university does is bring in and give access to uh, people with different skills, different knowledge, all of whom can shape and influence the particular research problem being studied. Quite a unique crucible of kind of knowledge generation. Professor Anthony, thank you very much indeed for your time.